I was born Noreen Dayon Larson, January 10th, 1933, in Salt Lake City, Utah. My parents were Carl Edward Larson and Mary Leon Ince Larson. My dad grew up in a lot of different places, but my mother lived in Holiday all her life. I want to tell you about my great-great-grandmother. Of course, I don't know her. I've never met her. She joined the church in England, and somehow she had a child, but she was not married. I don't know the background of that. I feel more she was, was put in a position where she couldn't have a say in that situation, and, and she became pregnant and had this child. She brought this little boy across the ocean and across the United States to Iowa where they built a handcart with other with many other new members of the church working their way to Salt Lake where the core of the church was then. And she they she was in the it was either the Martin or the Willie Company and I I've got it written down somewhere and I keep forgetting which one still again. But she was in one of those companies of pioneers who wended their way as far as Wyoming when the weather turned very bad in 1856, 57, one or the other. Anyway, and, they, and the storm came upon them. Winter hit very early that year. They were almost entirely out of food. They were, so they're starving and they're freezing to death in the snow. It, how they held up, I can't even imagine. But, of course, there was somebody who had come through, found these, these, these companies out there, got into Salt Lake, told Brigham Young. Immediately, he stopped conference, and he said, everybody go home, get your wagons ready, get the food, get the clothes, get the blankets, whatever you can send, and we're starting tomorrow to send help to these people. <laughs> That's how they were saved. She came on to Salt Lake with her little boy. She married after she got here, and I think she had about eight children. And I don't know how old the children were, I don't know the year of time, but it was polygamy was still a part of the church, the gospel at that time. Her husband left her and married another woman. He did leave her with a home and a little farm somewhere around 39th South and 50th, 70th, somewhere right in there. She had this little farm. She actually donated the la part of her farm while she, was while she was, had no husband to support her, only her children and this little farm to work and uh, take care of her little family, that she donated a lot on the corner for a church building, which has been torn down since. But it was, it was for the mill, it was called Mill Creek out in that area. And she, she did it. She had to be a very good woman, even though I know very little about her. She was like me, she didn't do a journal. She was too darn busy suffering through life, I think. <laughs> anyway, she, she had to be a wonderful woman. She was the mother of my grandmother. My my great grandmother's name was Mary uh, was Anne Herbert, and then she married, and, and I don't even remember her husband's first name, but it's Rynearson is the last name. So my grandmother was Mary Jane Rynearson, and that was her mother who came across the plains with a handcart, pulling that handcart and bringing her child with her. They were good women. They. Were, and they have colored my life. I, I would not be who I am if it hadn't been for the strength that was, and testimonies and perseverance and sacrifice of these people that, that stand behind me. And I want my children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. And I can see the lineup and they're all doing very good. And I am so proud of them and I want all of them. I don't care how many more generations it'll be but I want them all to love the Lord and know the gospel and live it as, as they should. I knew my grandfathers. My grandmothers both died before I was born, so I never knew a grandmother. I guess I learned to be a grandmother from my mother when I had children and she was the grandma. 
because I really didn't have one. And I always felt a little shortchanged. Of course, I felt shortchanged because I had four brothers and no sisters. And that's, that's a terrible thing to go through. <laughs> I think I grew up somewhat as a tomboy just because that's who I had to play with a lot, especially in the earliest years. And of course, I always had girl fr friends, neighbors, and all that too later. My dad was the oldest in his family. Uh, my grandparents were both, uh, on my dad's side, were both born in Denmark and joined the church over there. My grandpa was the only one in his family who joined the, the church, but my grandmother did have other members of her family who were also LDS. So my dad was really kind of over here alone, although he did have brothers and sisters that later immigrated over. But um, so my dad was the oldest of ch seven children he was nine and a half when his mother died. Obviously, <laughs> I didn't know her. Even, their, even the younger children probably never remembered their mother. The youngest child was six months old when, when Grandma died. And so, but, uh, but my dad, uh, my grandpa learned the, the trade of um, creamery, making butter and cheese in the old country where Took him four years, I think, to, to apprentice into that, um, learning that occupation. But he learned it over there. And then when he came here, he was, he was experienced. My, Grandma and Grandpa actually met on the boat that brought them to America. And, and then were married in Salt Lake after they, after they got clear hair. So, um, but my, Grandma had seven children in those nine and a half years could be the young death. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I could do, that could certainly uh, be part of it. Grandpa worked at and owned, I think he bought some creameries, you know, and made butter and cheese in various places. Uh, I, I wish I could say all the places they have been. I remember him being in Preston, Idaho and that's where my grand, where they were when my grandma died. When Dad's mother died, he, um, they had had a lady that had taken care of Grandma and the family. Imagine that taking care of somebody bedfast plus, pretty much bedfast. I'm thinking, and uh, and seven children. And after my grand, after my grandmother died, my grandpa actually married the lady who was taking, had been taking care of the family. So she became a step-grandma, very dear lady. So she was the closest to a grandma that I knew. And she <clears throat> was very dear to the children. The chil her, um, my dad's siblings all called her mother, maybe because it was the only mother the littler ones would ever know. But uh, uh, dad grew up like I say, in various towns around Utah, I know, even California, I think, maybe sometimes. That's a lot of distance to travel around in that period. Well, some of it was after Grandma died, though. Well, my grandpa and, and the step-grandmother had two children, uh, two girls. And after that, at some point, he decided to go on a mission back to Denmark and left her with nine children now. <laughs> And, and I don't know what to, to live on. Must have had made some money, went. And, and later, after he came back, and I think soon, they divorced, which was very unusual in that day and age. But, and even their children, even those two daughters of, of Aunt Esther, we always called her Aunt Esther, but Dad called her mother. But even her children didn't know why that divorce took place. But... It did. I knew my grandfather. He was very hard of hearing. His name was William Edward Ince. And uh, mother was one of the younger children in the family. I think she had a couple of brothers younger than her. One died at birth. But <clears throat> uh, he had a little acreage. Somebody told me it was only 20 acres, which amazes me that he raised a family. They had eight children, but four of them died young. Two as babies and two. One is a boy, 14, who was thrown off a horse 
by somebody honking the horn on the rather different um, car because cars weren't there weren't many the horse wasn't used to it threw this this uh, boy off the horse and broke his neck and another daughter, a sister in the family uh, named Edith was, died of pneumonia at 17 she had spent the whole winter in bed that was a long time ago and they didn't have the cures they have now the treatment so so they raised four children there and it was all in trees and berries and so on and that's how they made their living and so the kids worked hard helping yeah <laughs> we, we I grew up on three quarters of an acre in a lot of of uh, trees and I know you can grow a lot of fruit and berries in that much space and still have room for a house and and yard but uh, but she grew up in that kind of situation and not having known my grandmother and grandfather being hard of hearing I don't know if he ever really heard our little kid voices he died when I was about 14. my mother was a hard worker my mother uh, I remember mom as you know as a child taking care of us and playing and and so on I I uh, on on that three-quarter acre farm that we moved to when I was about seven and a half uh, she, by then she had four children and like I say it was a lot of fruit and berries there I remember we had 13 rows of raspberries a hundred feet width of our of our lot that was a lot of berries yeah we got up early in the mornings and picked berries till noon and uh, and sold them I remember at first we she, she paid us to do that I think we got three cents for a pint cup <laughs> made a lot of money that way later we group moved up to a nickel <laughs> I, I, I'm not one I'm wondering how much she paid uh, sold them for well they're probably a dollar dollar and a half a crate you know <laughs> of course these were earlier times when money was more scarce so she was a loving mother if I stayed home from school she fed you to death you had to go back to school <laughs> because you were gonna die of eat, overeating not because I ate that much probably because I was small and I didn't eat a lot and she just killed me with food <laughs> <laughs> but she was she was very loving and caring active in the church and um, and just just a good stay-at-home mom but um, but she worked hard she worked hard if we went to her house we always had to take leftovers home because she she couldn't have it any other way she was very good at sending food to some anybody the neighbors old friends whatever and if she knew anyone was ill she was sending him food um, she, she liked cooking and doing things for people she was a good cook she make very good pies but that's why I don't like pie as much I guess but cakes and cookies and I started making cookies and cakes probably too at about 10 years old of course with four brothers it was you know <laughs> they weren't doing that but I did that sort of thing and they had to cut the lawn and weed and things that I didn't do so I guess it was even and really when we were canning and we did can a lot of that fruit we grew there um, we all helped it it took it took a team there <laughs> peeling peaches and cutting them and processing them that was quite a job and uh, p shelling peas and stemming beans and breaking them we, we did a lot of canning back then but well <clears throat> we were very fortunate in the fact that dad always had a job and he worked <laughs> believe it or not at a creamery but he was a bookkeeper he had uh, gone to high school uh, at LDS high school in Salt Lake and actually met my mother on the bus she went to she lived in Holiday, but she went to West High School in Salt Lake because of a scoliosis she had in her back, a twist of the top of her back, that they had classes that would help her. They didn't know what it was at that time. I think she 
didn't know till she was 50 years old what it really was. As a child, they didn't know what had happened to her. Had she had a fall? Had she um, been sick and, and got some deformity? She had had scarlet fever. Did it come from that? You know, she, they really didn't know. But that's where they met, is on the bus from Salt Lake, uh, into, uh, or from Holiday into Salt Lake. And uh, so Dad had uh, became a, they called it bookkeeper now, they probably call it accountant. Maybe they got a more modern name than that. I'm, I'm old too now, so I don't know all the modern things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Dad always had this job, keeping the books at, at Nelson Rick's Creamery. When I was really young, uh, we lived about, I think about six south in West Temple, and, and his office, his, where he worked was, I think about third south, and I think maybe West Temple, I'm not really sure. I was spoiled a bit, I guess. Uh, they always took very special care of me, not that they weren't that way with the boys, so I, I don't know, but I always felt like I got special treatment. Uh, I remember as a teenager, girls wore jeans. I wore my brother's jeans till they got the wrong shape, you know. <laughs> they got too big on the waist and too small on the hip. And, and they started making girls' jeans then, so I actually managed to get that. And we loved to get our dad's white shirts and wear them. That's what men wore then, white shirts. And uh, my dad thought that was terrible. He did not want his only daughter dressed like a boy. <laughs> So it was. It was a little. <laughs> it wasn't a bad thing, but he. But he, that's the kind of. He wanted his daughter to be a girl, not not uh, not dress like a guy. So I don't know if I'd had to share my mom in a female way uh, with another with a sister. I don't know what it'd be like, but I always wanted a sister. I really was sad when my youngest brother, who was 11 years younger than me, was a boy. Oh darn! <laughs> I'll never get a sister, and I won't. But uh, I have sister-in-laws and because of my brother's wives. And, and uh, so I've had, and of course, I've had friends and all. It's just, I guess it's different having a sister. I'll never know. <laughs> I guess we pattern ourselves a little after our parents. We can't help but have had an influence on our, on the, on our traditions and the things we do. Uh, Dad, was, Dad was the guy who went to work and took care of the family and provided for us. And he always did, he always had a job, even through the, through the depression. I can remember my mother saying that she bought white shirts for my dad for 25 cents a pair, a, a shirt. And I know she bought fabric to make, she always made my clothes, um, for six cents a yard. Beautiful fabric, can you imagine? Now I can't afford to sew because the fabric's so expensive, I can buy the dresses cheaper. <laughs> but that's, that's how it was back in the Depression, I guess. I mean, we didn't realize, we, we, we were too young to notice the difference. And, and there were certainly people who struggled more than we did because Dad had a job. We could buy groceries. We didn't live luxuriously, but we always had enough. My older brother, Arland, uh, is almost two years older than me. And then I have a brother just over two years younger than me. So my older brother is Arland, and the younger brother is Glade. And that was all the children in the family till I was seven, seven and a half, really, when Brent was born. And that was just at the time, right after he was born, that we moved to Holiday. We'd lived in Sugar House for about four years. And, uh, and then, so Brent was the new baby when we moved to Holiday, and then about three and a half years later, my youngest brother was born. By then I'm 11, and, uh, and uh, yeah, yet another brother. So we're kind of spread out that way. My mother was told because of the scoliosis she twists in her back that she would, should never have children. She only had five, so. <laughs> she didn't take that, that too much to heart. She didn't let it stop her from having a family and enjoying that because everybody wants that. Were, were you pretty close with your brothers? I mean, you've, you've mentioned a couple times how bummed you were to not have a sister, but 
Oh, you I close was. With the I was close with them because the brothers that were just older and just younger, we just kind of grew up as a as a group, and uh, and played together. And I mean, I played the things they did. I played with their electric train. We built houses with the Lincoln logs and the Tinker toys because that's what we had then. Uh, and that's what they liked to do, and I did it with them. And I can't remember playing house with them very much, but I probably did. <clears throat> But then my younger brothers, I was enough older that they were like, they gave me somebody to, to tend, to, to teach, to play with that way, as, as I might as a babysitter, you know, a year, a few years later. Actually, by the time Weldon was born and I was 11, I was babysitting for neighbors. So, and so I had more of that kind of relationship with them, but I, but I loved and enjoyed them too. <laughs> together with us recently at a at a birthday party for me when I turned 80 and uh, and only Weldon missed it because we had the party at, at just the time of his birthday and his family was home with him and so he, we missed him but the others all came and we had a lovely time as well as all of my children and grandchildren I didn't miss many of them there it was wonderful <laughs>